Hi, this is uh, Jason, and I am going to do my uh, final reveal and uh, review of the 2023 Sprinter High Top 170 inch wheelbase all wheel drive model. My previous video showed uh, the truck right when I got it from the dealer, and I kind of went through some things on all the things that I was planning on uh, upfitting on it, and uh, pretty much everything is complete except for I have one. Uh, part for the interior light controls for the cargo area that is on back order um, So that they operate is they're just not on automatics uh, set up. So anyways um, uh, But uh, I can still show that nonetheless. So I decided to go ahead and uh, do it now uh, so that everyone can enjoy it So basically uh, I got the uh, van fully loaded from Mercedes uh, including the dual battery setup uh, all, all from the factory, but I went ahead and uh, decided to do some upfitting on my own so I went ahead and uh, added this uh, flare space uh, brush guard uh, on it. Um, the install went really easy. Uh, the only thing that was uh, a problem was I got the the uh, front park sensors and it's got like the Distronic and all that other stuff. But that wasn't necessarily an issue. But the directions that they provided and the way this was cut was from a previous year's model to where like twist in a lock. So I actually had to end up unhot welding the, the plastic brackets on the OEM bumper that hold these sensors and then I epoxied them to the inside to hold the sensors in there. There's just two of them there um, and they work just fine. So. The overall install went well, it's just that took a little bit more extra time, but uh, I'm sure they'll maybe get something figured out specifically for a 23 model. Uh, this is a little bit of a, a new truck for, for Mercedes. There's a lot of things that are the same, but a lot of things that are different. So, um, And I added the, uh, the light bar, which I got uh, switched with the OEM uh, fog and side lights. Uh, I'll show you how those work. And then um, I went ahead and did the sun visor, which was uh, not easy to get because it's got to come from Europe. Um, so I got that installed, and then I got a Kelsa um, high bar uh, installed on it as well. And then mounted on that, I have uh, my LED off-road light, um, and then the uh, emergency uh, lights, which I'll uh, show you as well. And then I went ahead and um, upfitted to these black rhino uh, aluminum rims with the uh, BF Goodrich uh, tires on there. So uh, this is the uh, 245-70 R17s. Uh, so basically this is about the biggest tire you can put on without having to modify any of the the fender wells, um, that sort of deal. I didn't want to go through all that. Um, this it actually has really good ground clearance, as you'll see from the first video, right from the uh, factory. Um, I added about, about another inch and a half by doing this setup. Um, but as you can see, it's got pretty good ground clearance. Uh, now that the truck is 100% upfitted, um, and then you'll see from the inside that the ascent is sagging probably about an inch from the front. So I am going to be looking at getting airbags. I got multiple contacts out um, or inquiries to multiple vendors to confirm that the back the, the bracketry will work uh, from the 22 to the 23 model. 22 is four wheel drive. Now it's all wheel drive. So um, they're not 100% sure it's going to be compatible, but we'll get it figured out. And then I might do uh, a supplemental after that. I'll send done. I uh, got the solar panels mounted on the roof. Um, this is all custom uh, work that, that we do. Um, and then mounted the, uh, the side lights. Pretty hard to tell um, in here, but uh, it, it lights up the whole side real nice like. And I do apologize for the vehicle being a little dirty. Um, we're in the midst of a blizzard. It's about minus 35 right now. Uh, so pretty hard to keep the truck clean. But anyways, so moving around to the back. Um, obviously, I got the um, hitch and whatnot uh, from the factory and then the step. I added the uh, billet uh, hitch and then the uh, brake controller, which I'll show you up front. Back here, I have the Kelsa um, back bar and then I mounted my uh, emergency light and LED work light on there. Then you'll also notice the factory rear view camera. And then off to the right is a smaller camera. 
and that's an aftermarket that I added. The reason why I did that was is that the rear camera on this is great, but only works in reverse. And in a vehicle that has absolutely no glass in it, um, I would sure like to be able to see directly behind me, uh, especially when I'm towing a trailer so I can kind of just keep an eye on the load, but then also don't have to worry about some small car or, or motorcycle being right up on you and you can't see them. Um, so the aftermarket one can run continuously all the time so I can see, so I added that, which was mildly a pain in the butt, which uh, we'll talk about that once I get back inside here. So. I'm just going to walk around front here and then also I added the uh, the uh, side vents in here so it just gives it a nice little extra uh, look and I like being able to crack the window uh, when it's raining out or something else like that and uh, not worry about water coming in. So from the factory the auxiliary battery is underneath the seat and then um, I went ahead and added uh, my charge controller for the solar. Uh, right here, I made a custom bracket in there um, so I can still have access to the display and whatnot. So it worked out uh, pretty good. I'll just put this back. And then I added uh, my uh, RAM workstation uh, mount. So that was really simple to, uh, to mount in here. And you'll be able to see the other view from the other side. And then I added this little like little cabinet deal. Um, this lid comes up and then acts like a little table as well, so you can write on or, or whatever. Or, uh, as I use uh, use it for a little uh, dining table, uh, eat sandwiches on and whatnot. So that worked out pretty good. And then I mounted my um, my inverter uh, remote display up here, so I can see what is going on with uh, my inverter. Uh, right now, I'm not connected to shore power, uh, but uh, that's a nice little uh, feature to have uh, right up front here. And let's see, I'll go around to the other side. I had some reservations on the four cylinder turbo, but um, actually um, I'm kind of liking it. The only problem that I'm having right now is, is that once in a while, I got the check engine light on right now. Once in a while, for some reason, if you kind of brake hard and then turn hard, like to the right, like at an intersection or something, it loses all power and you gotta basically stop and then like restart the vehicle. Um, I've reset the codes multiple times, but it's when you just leave the check engine light is when it runs great. So, I don't know, we'll get it sorted out at one point, but it's not mission critical. Um, I went ahead and added uh, a USB, a standard USB power supply here. This truck has no USB power supplies whatsoever, except for uh, the uh, Micro C, uh, which is only basically in the front, um, in the front area up here, which is not really useful if you want to be powering stuff up here, so you don't have cords running all down through th this area or whatever. So, uh, front camera is mounted there, and then this is the aftermarket uh, uh, mirror on that. I'll just start her on up here, the truck. Um, does not have a windshield mount bracket that comes with the truck for obvious reasons because it doesn't have a mirror, so I had to fabricate my own. I think it turned out really good, um, and it's pretty uh, pretty sturdy. So, But I got here where you can see uh, the rear camera front camera where you can switch the view to where it's all front or all back or off or whatever um, so not only are there cameras but they're, they're they're recording all the time as well so it's like a dash cam type deal um, so it works out uh, pretty good from that aspect um, so here I have my um, uh, my brake controller uh, it has a nice digital display on it and it's automatic but you can make some adjustments on there and whatnot and then um, the horn on the sprinter is from the factory pathetic listen to this i mean really like a 11,000 pound truck and it sounds like a horn off of like a citroen or something anyway so i couldn't have that so i went ahead and added in my own horn system uh, so this is just the control for it, but this actually sounds a lot better. So anyways, uh, that's what that's all about. Um, can't think of anything else in here that I added. So, oh, so I forgot the light controls for the light bars. So, um, as you can see, inside the Sprinter is all black. 
so it's it's very dark in here and even with these controls which I have you know set up for my back and my front light controls both the light bars and the emergency light bars um, you can see you, you can't see really necessarily the labels on here and even when it's on you really can't see it's not a bright backlit display to really see what's going on so I kind of just added this little extra light here just to kind of light it up a little bit more especially at night so you can kind of see the buttons I suppose after a while it would just be muscle memory uh, but you know uh, it's just nice to have that additional feature but um, I elected to install it here versus down here because there's really no good places to have the controls and then of course getting these huge bundles of wires um, you know up through here and make it look decent was kind of hard and you don't really need to access it really all that much anyway so this actually works good you just reach up left and and uh, it's all right there so um, so speaking of uh, I'll uh, turn on these so you can see what they look like oh. Those are, these are STL lights, by the way. Um, everything went real smooth uh, on it uh, for install, so uh, really no issues or problems there. Like I said, I would just like to see a better uh, back control, backlight control for it. Then, of course, you can set up directionals and everything else on it. And then off of, and then they provide an auxiliary input. And then I went ahead and tied in my big LED lights off that, so you hit just auxiliary. Oh. And now you have that light bar. Now this one's still off because this one's tied into the OEM uh, switch, which I will sh show real quick. So this is your front fog lights, and they happen to be your side turn lights as well. So when you start turning the steering wheel, the left or right corner lights up. And it's under that control. Now what's nice about this is, is that when you shut the truck off, these lights are the ones that remain on for ambient lighting, you know, to unload or to get out of your vehicle or whatever. So that's kind of nice. I use the switch leg relay for this light. Problem is, is that if you put it, if you keep it in automatic high beam mode, it works fine. If you take it off, then when you turn the wheel left, it turns this light on. So um, that's mildly irritating. There's no way, I already talked to the dealer, there's no way to disable that feature altogether. So as long as you keep it on automatic high beams, you can use definitely that as a switch leg. And I just like having the, the OEM switch uh, for that control. So, and then um, the uh, back LED work light is right there. All right, so I'm gonna turn all this stuff off. And I'll show you the cargo area. I don't think I need the engine running for that. Okay, so I just shut it off. And you can see these are the lights that remain on and I got it set up for one minute. So that's kind of nice. All right, so the cargo area. Did a lot of upfitting back here. So I got my, kind of like my workbench, my tool cabinet. It's nice that these lock. So you don't have to worry about them uh, taking off on you. So that's nice. Got a nice little power supply here, 120 volts, a fire extinguisher, first aid kit, everything's all right there. And then upfitted it here, and then we added all the LED lights to all this uh, uh, shelving, which is off of a motion switch. So as soon as you walk into the vehicle, then um, the interior lights for the uh, cabinets will all come on. Um, and like I said, all of them are lit. So I have Plenty of uh, light and uh, different source of power, both DC and AC uh, power sources at my convenience. Um, on this side too, everything's all nice here. I got a few more cables to install. Um, that wasn't part of the deal. This is something I fabricated myself. It actually works out really good to have a little bit of a workspace then also not come crashing down on the next one or if you wanted to open the next one you could still do it you can still have multiple ones uh, open so it works really good so I just gotta wait for that to come in and then the door is gonna go on this one as well I decided to go ahead and close that off got my uh, air supply in here with um, I think it's 50 feet of hose 
uh, that's on there. And there is the inverter. This is an inverter charger. Uh, actually, I install a lot of these. I really like this brand. Um, it's Ames, uh, and they're out of Nevada. So um, works out really good, and of course it has shore power, um, which I guess I just show that. So the way I do these is that I just um, run the wire. There's actually a pathway to get through the firewall and this B, B pillar. And then you can basically sit there and run your cord for your shore power. So when you get out of your vehicle, you just open this up. I got the extension cord just sitting like right here. I just plug it in and then I can close the door. Um, and it just sits there plugged in and uh, then everything is running off of shore power um, and then also charging the uh, onboard batteries at the same time and powering the AC bus. So everything that I have AC on the inside of the vehicle, including up front, it's actually pretty hard to see, but I also have an outlet down there for up front it is all powered off of shore power. So that's uh, a nice little convenience. So I can have all my power tools and everything else like that charging all the time, regardless if it's coming off the solar with the engine off or the engine running, charging everything or shore power. So it works out pretty good. So anyways, um, so this is just more upfitting. And then on my uh, old, other trucks, I've always had the ladder on the top, but I decided not to do that. It's taken away space and it is really difficult to get up and down. Um, I don't know why the manufacturers are not making things specifically for, I mean, I'm 5'10", so I'm not short by any means, but it's still really, really hard to reach up to get to the ladder assembly. And that was on like an old two wheel drive, like, a, like the one over there. This one's even higher, so there's gonna be more of a problem. So the money that you spend on it and kind of the inconvenience, and whatnot, I decided to uh, have it on the inside space and it kind of works out uh, really nice. Added the uh, extra LED lights on the inside, of course, because the stock lights really suck bad. Um, so we added those and of course one above the workstation here. So you can see everything is very well lit, um, accessible. Um, got all my drawers here, got plenty of storage back here. And of course for in the back, you can open up the doors and then you got uh, all of this uh, space here and I'm nicely lit and whatnot. Added the extra floor mat in there just for additional uh, uh, gripping and cleaning. This uh, this uh, like wood that they put down is not bad, but it does get scuffed up quite easily and then it uh, gets kind of hard to uh, keep clean and keep it looking nice with the rubber. You wipe it down once in a while with just even a, a mop and it looks brand new again, so I like that approach. So, that's really about, like I said, the only thing I might add is a set of airbags in the back like I have on my other trucks. Um, that will definitely help with both towing capacity and then also uh, the little bit of sag. We did the math here. We got about 2,000 pounds of cargo um, and upfitting, so... Uh, it's not surprising that it sagged a little bit, but it's not a horrible amount. But anyways, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, other than that, I think that should do her. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, our company does uh, do quite a bit of upfitting, uh, specifically on Sprinter trucks. So if you're interested in uh, uh, something from either an off-roader uh, off to an overlander, RV, work truck type, type deal like this, um, feel free to reach out. Thanks.